This is Joseph Trust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I fix uneven topology when using ZRemesher? So this question was sent along with an image, and here we have the image here. So the question is asking about how to get topology established with the ZModeler brush. So as an example here, we have this axe. And let's say I want to come through and I want the ZRemesher topology to kind of follow some lines here. So let's say I want to have a nice clean edge loop on the blade and then maybe on the division between where the handle reaches the metal portion as well. So how can I help ZRemesher generate these edges inside a ZBrush? So to start off, I'm just going to go back to ZBrush, and here I have a demo version of an axe here, so a quick axe model. And you can see that this mesh contains quite a few polygons, so I'm at about half a million here. And if I turn on my polyframes, you can see this is a pretty dense mesh. So I want to take this model now, and I want to use the ZRemesher process to generate new topology, or even a lower resolution version on this. So I'm going to go to the tool palette over here, I'm going to open up the geometry tab, and I'm going to open up the ZRemesher area, and then in here we have this ZRemesher button. So ZRemesher is going to look at the sculptural details on your model and generate new topology around those details. So if I just come over here and click this, now when the process completes, I'm going to get a result like this. So it's taking that sculptural version of my mesh, and it's giving me this new low resolution version. Now you can see the topology on this worked out pretty well, which is the default settings. I almost have that clean edge line for the blade here, and I also have some good corresponding edge loops from where the handle is. But let's say I want to determine how these fall a little bit better. So I want this to be a really clean line through here. So there are a few things you can do with ZRemesher to help guide how it's going to generate this new topology. So the first thing, if I just undo this back to my original model and turn off the polyframes here, is you can use the ZRemesher Guides brush. Now the ZRemesher Guides brush is located in the brush palette, so if I just click over here and then isolate by the letter Z, you can see down here we have a ZRemesher Guides brush. Now if I select this, it's now going to give me a brush, and when I draw out on the surface of the model here, it's going to start generating a curve. Now after you draw this curve out, ZRemesher can look at this to establish a geometry line. So let's say I want this geometry line to be generated just like this on this blade part. So after I've drawn this out, they can draw multiples of these curves as well. So you can just keep drawing these on your mesh and determine different areas of where you want topology to flow. Now after you have these here, you can go back to the zero mesh area over here, and we just need to adjust this curve strength slider. Now by default, this is set to 50, so it's going to use these curves at 50% to determine the new topology. If you want this to generate a perfect line after zero mesh processes, you want to just crank this up. So I'm just going to crank this all the way up to 100. Now this is going to look at these curves, and it's going to generate a row of topology based along these curves. So now if I reprocess this mesh again with this curve, and the curve strength set to 100, just clicking ZRemesher. Now when this is done, if I turn on my polyframes, I should have an edge loop that 100% matches where that curve was. So if I undo this and then redo, you can see here's the edge here. And now if I redo, you can see this is the edge loop that correlated directly with that guide. So you can use this ZRemesher Guides brush to determine where you want those edge loops to fall. And once again, here was the guide. And if I just redo that action there, you can see this is the edge loop that was created right along that guide there. So you just draw those curves out, and then you can come over here and adjust this curve strength, and that's going to allow ZRemesher to look at those curves and use those as guides to generate that new topology. So that is one method you can do to kind of clean up topology when using ZRemesher. Now another process you can do is you can use polygrouping. And so this is the process that I usually prefer. And so I'm just going to take the axe here, and I'm going to just select the mask lasso brush. So I'm going to hold control on my keyboard. I'm going to go to the brush palette over here and open this up. And now I'm going to select the mask lasso brush. Now with this selected, I'm just going to come across the model, and I'm just going to mask out the edge of the blade here. So I'm just going to draw a lasso out and try to adhere exactly to that edge. And it's going to give me something like this. Now I can come through and refine this with more masking if needed to try to get this exactly where I want it on the mesh there. You can also use any other masking brushes, so the mask pen or anything else you want to do to try to get this area established. 
Now, after you have this masking set, I'm now going to take this masking and I'm going to generate a new polygroup with some edge loops around it. So the process to do this, you're just going to go back to your tool palette over here, go to the geometry area, open up this edge loop area here, and underneath the edge loop area, you have this edge loop masked border. It's going to look at the masked area of the model. It's going to give that area a new polygroup, and then it's going to apply some group looping around those edges to smooth that masked area out, giving you a nice clean transition. So I'm just going to click this, and I can see it has refined that mask, and if I just clear it and then turn on my polyframes and turn off line, you can see I now have a new polygroup that was established in that area. And if I just hold Control and Shift and click on that polygroup, you can see that it's given me a clean polygroup breakup between those two areas. So now my axe here has this polygroup, has this middle polygroup, and then it also has the handle. So with polygroups set up on your high resolution model, we can now go back to the geometry tab, go back to the zero mesh area here, and we can activate this keep groups option. Now with this keep groups option active, it's going to now use the polygrouping that's on our mesh, and it's going to use those as the guides for zero mesher. So now if I zoom in on my model here, and now run zero mesher, and now after this completes, if I turn back on my line here, you can see that the polygrouping has been held. So it's kept the polygrouping, and it's used those as the guides for zero mesher. So now you can see I have this blade part now broken out. I then have the middle area here, and then I also have the handle. So that is another process you can use, just establishing polygroups on your mesh and then using this keep groups option. Now after you have the zero mesher process established once, remember that you can also run it again, and this will help refine that mesh some more. So if I come over here and just set this to half now, and now run zero mesher again, this is going to reprocess the mesh with the current model, and it's going to even give me lower topology. So you can keep running this with this half option selected, and you're gonna get a lower result. It's still gonna keep those groups and give you a cleaner mesh. So another little thing you can do with zero mesher to start generating low resolution topology. For more information on ZRemesher, below this video there is a link to the Z Classroom tutorials, which will cover ZRemesher in greater depth and how to use the guides and other options to generate different topology when using ZRemesher. If you have any other questions on ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing!